This tutorial shows you how to use a geographic information system known as GRASS-GIS to clip large vector data sets to smaller ones using a cookie cutter shape and to create buffers around vector features. For more information on GIS and on GRASS-GIS in particular, see the links in the show notes below. I also have a video with more background about vectors. You can find it in the show notes as well. This tutorial assumes that you have GRASS-GIS installed. Instructions can be found in the show notes below. This tutorial assumes you are using Ubuntu Linux version 20.04 as your operating system. If you do not have Linux, you can emulate it on your Windows or Mac computer for free. See the show notes for details. In fact, I am emulating Linux right now on my Mac computer using VirtualBox. I have a VirtualBox virtual machine pre-configured with the software I will show you today, as well as other population genetics and ecological niche modeling and GIS software. See the show notes below for step-by-step -step instructions to download and hook up this virtual machine within your Windows or Mac computer. The first thing to do is to open up a web browser, which I have pinned to my favorites or which you can find by searching below. Navigate to my website, joshbanta.com. Click on Tutorials. And with the Control F buttons, open up a search window and search for buffer. I want you to notice that it, it, it occurs here in the table of contents twice. The first set of tutorials for GIS are using a program called ArcGIS. That is not the one we'll be using. The second set of tutorials are using the GIS software GRASSGIS. That is the one we are using. So you're going to want to click on the second instance of buffering and clipping in the table of contents. And that will take you to the uh, directly to that section. Click on files needed for tutorial. Click on the download button. Click download anyway. When the file is finished downloading, you may close Google Chrome. Next, open up File Explorer, which I have pinned to my favorites on the left or which you can find by searching below. Navigate to your Downloads folder. Double-click on the file Vector Buffer Lab Files.zip, which we just downloaded. This opens up a program called Archive Manager. This is because the file that we downloaded is in a zip archive where the files within it are compressed. We need to extract the files from the zip archive to another location in order to be able to use them and to access them. Come to the favorites over here on the left or find File Explorer by searching below and click on it. And with File Explorer open, navigate to your home directory and then click on Grass Data. Then find the other window that's still open on your screen for the program Archive Manager that contains the folder called Lab 8. Take that folder and drag it into the Finder window, the File Explorer window. The files have been extracted and are ready for use. You may now close the Archive Manager software. Next, load GRASS. Do this by opening Terminal. This is a quick splice to ask you to consider subscribing to my channel by hitting the subscribe button. It does not cost anything. It is totally free. But if you like what I am doing and want to support my work, I encourage you to visit patreon.com slash joshbanta and make a voluntary contribution. The link is in the show notes below.
Your support helps me to deliver new content and keep this channel current and vibrant. Thank you. Type in grass. Click new to select a new grass location. But before we do that, we need to select browse and make sure that home sample grass data is our location. If you see this here, you're fine. If you don't, click on Browse, then click on Home, scroll down to Grass Data, select it, but don't double click on it, just select it and click Open. Next, click on New. Just to make sure that I won't be overriding any grass locations that you made in another tutorial, we're going to start off by calling this one Projection 20. Click on Next. Click Read Projection and Datum Terms from a GeoReference data file. Click on Next. Then click on Browse. Navigate to your Home folder and then navigate to Grass Data. Double click on it. Then double click on Lab 8. This folder here contains counties within the state of Texas. So double click on that because that is going to be our starting layer. Find the file with the extension .shp. For vectors, that is always the file that you will look for. Click on it and then click on Open. Click on Next. Click on Finish. Click OK. Do you want to import this shape file into the newly created location? Click on Yes. The task is underway, as you can see, by the spinning wheel. The data file was imported successfully. Click OK. These data files with the .shp extension are in the ArcInfo or ArcGIS format. And it's a very common portable format to uh, exchange data layers. And we're importing that into GrassGIS. Click Start Grass Session. We have imported the new layer into GrassGIS but it is not displaying in the table of contents. To do that, we have to go to File, Map Display, Add Vector. From the drop-down menu, choose the Counties layer and click OK. And there you have it. Right-click or, if you're on a Mac, push down on the trackpad with two fingers and choose Zoom to Selected Maps. And there you can see our counties layer. Next, we're going to import a layer of rivers. Rather than going through all the steps of creating a new grass location that conforms to the projection, datum, and ellipsoid of the rivers layer, we're going to import the rivers layer directly into the current grass location which has a different coordinate system projection and or ellipsoid. How are we going to do that? The rivers layer is stored in that ArcGIS or ArcInfo format that's called shapefiles. Those shapefiles contain information about the coordinate system projection and ellipsoid of that layer. GrassGIS can use that information 
to transform, in other words, to reproject and change the coordinate system of that rivers layer such that it can be imported into the current grass location and it can conform to the current grass locations coordinate system projection and ellipsoid. Here's how to do that. Go to File, Import Vector Data, Simplified Vector Import with Reprojection. Click on Browse. Navigate to the Grass Data folder within your home directory. Double-click on it. Double-click on Lab 8. Double-click on NHD Flow Line. Cho choose NHD Flow Line Project.shp and click on Open. Now click on Import. The process takes about 30 seconds. And when it's finished, if you can see the map display behind the dialog window, you can click Close on the dialog window. This is showing us all of the rivers and tributaries of those rivers in the state of Texas. Now we will clip this rivers layer to just the spatial extent of Smith County, Texas. To do that, click on the Layers tab in the Layer Manager. This brings up our table of contents. Right now, I have the rivers layer highlighted, but I'm going to take my clicker and highlight the counties layer instead. Next, on a Windows style mouse or trackpad, you're going to right click. If you're on a Mac laptop, you'll push down on the trackpad with two fingers and you'll select Show Attribute Data. Then, with the table that appears, you will scroll down to Smith County and select it. Next, if you're on a Windows machine, right-click Mac uh, Laptop, push down on the trackpad with two fingers. From the drop-down menu, select Extract Selected Features. We will call the new layer Smith for Smith County. Click OK. Now this window that has the table open, we can click on Close. Next, to get ready for clipping the rivers layer to the spatial extent of Smith County, I'm going to check the box for Smith County so that it's being displayed. I'm going to uncheck the box for all of the other Texas counties, and I'm going to keep the rivers layer also checked. Another thing you can do to verify that everything is working so far is you can highlight the Smith County layer and then you can hold down on it with your mouse or trackpad and drag it to the top. You can see that it's, it's working so far because I have a layer that's only Smith County as you can see here and then here's my rivers layer. The other counties are not displayed. Next, select Vector, Overlay Vector Maps, Overlay Vector Maps. The bigger layer that you're looking to clip goes in A. In our case, that's the Rivers layer, NHD flow line. The input vector map in B is the cookie cutter. In this case, Smith County. In the drop-down menu, under Operator Defines Features Written to Output Vector Map, choose AND. This will cause the clip to be to the spatial extent of Smith County. 
for the new clipped layer that we're making of rivers, let's call it Smith Flow, meaning rivers clipped to the spatial extent of Smith County. Although, of course, we could call this output vector map anything that we would like. Click on Run. You'll know it's finished when you see Command Finished on your screen. Then you can close the dialog window. Next, we're going to verify that our clip worked. If our clip worked, we should have rivers, but only within the spatial extent of Smith County. To verify, I'm going to uncheck the Smith County cookie cutter and I'm going to uncheck the rivers layer covering the entire state of Texas. And now I will right click on the Smith County rivers layer and I will choose, and that was right click by the way, if you're on a Windows machine or a Windows style mouse, it would be pushing down on the trackpad with two fingers if you're on a Mac laptop. Zoom to selected maps. And there you go. That is rivers, but clipped to the shape of Smith County, Texas. Next, use your knowledge from the previous laboratory assignments to show me what the datum, projection, and ellipsoid is for the current grass location. That will tell us Therefore, what the datum, projection, and ellipsoid is for this new layer that we've created that is just Rivers of Smith County, Texas. So do that and show that in your work. Next, we're going to do this very handy thing called buffering. If I zoom in, on these creeks and rivers. It's lines, because this is a vector layer. No matter how much I zoom in, these are lines. You don't need to do that zoom in that I just did right now in your tutorial, in your recording of yourselves. But the important thing is that what if we wanted to know which of our locations of our squirrels are within 100 meters or 100 feet or 100 miles of the, any river. The first step in doing that would be to delineate, draw lines showing all of the land that is within whatever distance we want from the rivers. That's called buffering. Turns out that it's something very useful that it, you, you will use all the time whenever you are using GIS software in your future careers or your future research endeavors. Here's how we do it. Go to Vector from the drop-down menu and choose buffer vectors. And we indeed want to use Smith Flow, but just in case you can come in here and make sure that you have that selected. We're going to make a new layer that looks just like the current layer, except that all of our rivers will have a buffer zone of 100 meters around them. So we're going to call our output layer Smith Flow, and I'll just add the number 100 there so that I know when I look at it that this is a 100 meter buffer around the rivers of Smith County. Okay, don't click on Run yet. The next thing we have to do is select the tab Distance and it asks for the buffer distance along the major axis 
and along the minor axis. We will set both to 100, where one of these is the x-axis and one is the y-axis around the river. By having different options for the major axis and the minor axis, it allows one to have different distances away from the river if the river is facing to the south than if the river is facing in a different orientation. But that's something that we're not going to bother with. So we always set them the same. The units of this grass location are meters. One more thing. Come here to attributes. There's this option to transfer categories and attributes. We're going to try checking that and we're going to see what happens. Click on run. All right, now that it says command finished, we can click on close. Uncheck the Smith flow layer so that only Smith flow with the buffer of 100 meters around the rivers is checked. It looks pretty much like the other layer did, but I'm going to, going to show you the buffers around the rivers. Click on the plus inside the magnifying lens. This is the zoom in tool. And then drag your mouse over some relatively small place on your screen. And there we can see that now we don't just have lines representing the rivers, we have polygons representing the rivers. And that's because there is now a 100 meter buffer around encircling the rivers. But look at these little circles in here, these strange little circles. What we did was we told GRASSGIS to transfer the attribute data of the rivers to the new polygons that we've created based upon buffering 100 meters around the rivers. That means that if a segment of river was called the Sabine River, that information is transferred to this new layer that is just the buffers. So we know that this is the buffer surrounding the Sabine River. This is the buffer surrounding the some tributary of the Sabine. So these little circles are when you have two areas that have two different sets of information tagged to them. You have overlapping polygons. This isn't something that you see when you have lines because one particular stem will be some tributary of the Sabine and then this, it will connect directly to the Sabine at a single point. But once we've buffered these, these streams, now that tributary is no longer connecting to the Sabine at only a single point. It's connecting to the Sabine across a whole bunch of area. And that whole bunch of area is now an overlap between the Sabine River and the tributary of the Sabine River. So that's why you see those weird little circles. Now I'm going to show you how we can buffer the rivers layer and not have those weird little circles. So let's uncheck the Smith Flow 100 layer from our table of contents. And let's check the box next to the uh, Smith Flow layer. And again, if you're on a Windows style mouse, right click. If you're on a Mac trackpad, push down with two fingers. Go to Zoom to Selected Maps so we can see the whole thing. Go to Vector, Buffer Vectors. We're, going, we're, we're again going to use Smith Flow as our large vector that we are trying to clip. The name for the, I, I'm sorry, not trying to clip, that we are trying to buffer. 
The name for the output vector map we will now call Smith Flow 100, but we'll call it B to differentiate it from the last time we ran. The distance will again be 100 meters, whether it's along the major axis or along the minor axis. And here under attributes, we're going to leave transfer categories and attributes blank. This means we won't have any problems with overlaps because these polygons won't take on the identity of their stretches of the rivers. Click on Run. Now that the command is finished, you may close the dialog window. And let's see if it looks any differently. I'll come back over here to the map display and choose the plus magnifying lens. And I'll draw a small sized box that will cause it to zoom in. And now all those weird little circles are gone. So that's a good trick to know. Now it's your turn to demonstrate what you've learned. I want you to follow the steps from 11 minutes and 8 seconds into this video if you're watching on Canvas, to 25 minutes and 40 seconds into this video if you're watching on Canvas, or 11 minutes and 37 seconds if you're watching on YouTube until 26 minutes and 9 seconds if you're watching on YouTube. Within that time interval, I want you to repeat the steps so that you create your own layer of rivers within a Texas county where there's a buffer created around those rivers. And I only want to see the buffered layer in your final product. I want you to pick a different county than Smith County and I want you to pick a different buffering distance than 100 meters. But don't make it too small because then you won't be able to see it. And I want you to zoom in so that I can see that your buffering worked. And I want to see that your buffering worked where you created buffers without the circles, without the little circles. So go ahead and do those steps and then you're finished with this lab.